I have matched 85 couples so far. Considering that ours is a very small community, I suppose the, these figures are okay. I would like to make sure that we don't die out, we don't become extinct. So what I did was I made a database of all the youngsters and I started matching them on email. Twenty-five-year-old composer Kezard is Zawin's newest matchmaking client. As an only child, the continuation of his family's Parsi line depends on him. I have to get married within the community. That is definitely the norm. It is something that I would want to do for my own self, for my own soul. Mm, no, I haven't found the one for myself yet. Hello, Zareen. To help with the search, Kezard's meeting Zareen to talk about his ideal future partner. Okay, so what are you looking for in a girl? Good question. I don't have a very big checklist, to be very okay, frank. Wonderful. But just want someone simple, understanding, who will be flexible at times. And you want a Parsi Zoroastrian girl? Yeah, I mean, I would love Keeping to. Keeping my fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, I hope it works. Yeah, for me as well, I yeah. hope so. We are originally from Persia and we came to India around 1300 years ago to flee religious persecution. We gave a promise when we came that we will ensure that we do not convert anybody. Most of Austrians now live in India and have kept that promise of no conversions to this day. But that's limited how much the faith can grow. There are now fewer than 60,000 believers in India. That's half as many as in the 1940s. I've organized a picnic for Kezad to meet some other young Parsis to talk about the challenges of dating and marriage in their tiny community. Who knows, maybe they'll even hit it off. I'm messaging them questions to help break the ice. Okay, um, so what are the things or qualities that you're looking for in your partner? The first is uh, open-mindedness, that's for sure. You know, he has to be supportive of whatever I want to do. What then, else? Tall, <laughs> I like ambition. I yeah. like to see that a person wants something, he does it, and he's going for, forward for it. That's, that's what like I mean. <laughs> they seem to be getting on okay, so I'll send a question to Karishma's friend Alicia now. For her, it's not essential her future partner is a Parsi, but they need to be loyal and open-minded. Why do you think it is hard these days to find a Parsi partner? Half the Parsis are either too old, they don't want to get married, already yeah. married. So I think Parsis are very picky and thus the community is getting smaller day by day. There was that uh, movie that came out about uh, four weddings and a funeral and then there was a joke over here that it, in Parsis it was uh, four uh, funerals and a wedding. Uh, which is really basically true. If you've got 841 people dying in a year and you've got about 250 or 200 or so people marrying. The birth rate is so low that the Indian government has stepped in, funding fertility treatment for couples under a scheme called Geoparsi or Long Live Parsi. बच्चा चाहिए था वो आ नहीं रहा था तो फिर हमें पता चला कि जियो पार्सी हमें मदद दे रहे हैं फिर दो साल तक ट्रीटमेंट किया बाद में वो आया हां क्योंकि पहला बेबी था ना वो अच्छा था Raymond and Charmaine now have another baby boy born through Geoparsi and in the past eight years this scheme has helped over 200 couples to have children. But under Indian law, Parsi women who've married outside the community can't take part. 20-year-old Karishma thinks relaxing the rules could help the religion survive in India. I think the Parsi community is uh, declining ma mainly because of the restrictions on Parsi women. If a pa Parsi woman marries a non-Parsi, a guy, their child cannot be raised as a Parsi. So it has to be raised according to the religion of the guy. But for some, calls to relax marriage rules are too much of a departure from their core beliefs. The fact that we have survived is because of 
not marrying outside. If we had married outside, then all this uniqueness would have been lost. I'm just doing my bit, trying my level best to get somebody within the community, protect the, the religion that you've been born with. Despite these differences, Zoroastrians in India all agree the priority is to ensure their faith lives on. We have a unique legacy which is important to take forward. Whatever happens, a younger generation is smart, they'll figure out a way. Human race is tough and Parsis are tougher. It's the end of the day in Mumbai and I want to find out how the picnic's gone. It was absolutely amazing. And yeah, they're, they're pretty um, jolly, I would say. It's nice to add a few more Parsis to the friend circle list. The picnic might have been purely friendship, but kezar has been in touch with an update on his love life. I have been speaking to someone. I found her from Serene's list. Do you think she's the one? Yes, I definitely think she's the one. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes, I definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks to you, you definitely invited to my wedding. Let's speak now to Professor Almut Hintzer, who is a professor of Zoroastrianism studies at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. Hello, Professor. Hello. Hi. Tell us more about this religion. What do followers believe in? Zoroastrianism is a monotheistic religion. They have one god called Ahura Mazda, who also, however, has an opponent, and that is evil, which is external to God. This religion is very ancient. As it was said in your program, it is about even more than 3,000 years old, and it was originally practiced by in Iran. And then after the Arab conquest of Iran in the 7th century of the Christian era, Zoroastrians migrated to India and settled in India, where they became known as the Parsis. And there they have uh, preserved the religion, as also have some Zoroastrians back in Iran. Okay. Find... Um, and what do you think about the fact that it is now under threat? It is indeed uh, the case, and that is in India, uh, so because of high education of women. Zoroastrians are very keen on, zero, uh, on education and they were at the forefront of female education during the 19th century. Nowadays, many uh, young Zoroastrian women are professionals and they have other priorities. So that is one uh, reason. And uh, uh, another reason for the decline of numbers of Zoroastrians in India is migration. So many Zoroastrians leave India and uh, prefer to live somewhere in another, in an English-speaking country, usually the US or Australia. Or does Canada. It, sorry, does it matter if, if followers decline? Does it matter if it, it becomes extinct? It matters hugely because the Zoroastrian religion is one of the most significant uh, religions in human history. Uh, it has massively impacted on uh, Judaism and later on Christianity. Ideas about heaven and hell, judgment after death, resurrection of the body. These ideas were first formulated in Zoroastrianism as part of a coherent thought system. So it has a very strong historical uh, uh, significance in the history of religious thought. But not only that, also Zoroastrianism is a major player in the formulation of Iranian identity. So there what is... would you suggest are ways then to make sure it doesn't die out? It needs to be protected. It's an endangered heritage, uh, cultural uh, uh, in, in, uh, heritage, and uh, and uh, Zoroastrians uh, also need to be educated to be aware of the precious heritage they have. Thank you very much for talking to us, Professor. Thank you, Thank Professor Almut Hintzer.